This is Appalling News. I'm Paul Chatto. We have come to the point where it seems that there is nothing more egregious, more profane than defacing a rainbow crosswalk by burning rubber on it while doing donuts in your muscle car or truck or, in the case of the defaced crosswalk in Spokane, Washington, on a lime scooter. If you are not familiar with lime scooters, they are in service in several cities that provides e-bikes and scooter sharing. Two minors and a 19-year-old were arrested on suspicion of first-degree malicious mischief for intentionally skidding their lime scooter tires on this now tiresome exercise in virtue signaling. What this reporter wants to know is, doesn't skidding on a pride sidewalk while riding a climate change friendly e-bike cancel each other? One would think that the offense towards a protected class, not based on any meaningful accomplishments but solely for which organ they play, would be negated by climate change activism. If you take a look at this picture, the damage looks to be less massive defacement by skid marks and more like scuff marks. The linoleum in my mother's kitchen looked worse. The specter of teenagers facing years in prison for scuffing up a street mural trampled each day by innumerable cars, bicycles, and pedestrians seems to us excessive. Will lime bikes become the new chopper for biker gangs who want to deface rainbow crosswalks in an eco-friendly manner? We can only guess. But the people of St. Petersburg, Florida, are not taking a similar incident in their city lightly. Police searching for drivers who twice defaced LGBT progressive pride mural. In a statement posted on Facebook, the St. Petersburg Police Department announced that over the last week, two different vehicles have left tire marks damaging the Progressive Pride Street mural at the 2500 Central Avenue roundabout. If you're practicing safe sex, then this gives new meaning to burning rubber. This footage was taken outside of Sterling Long's bar called Ride'em Cowboy. Sounds like a wonderful, wholesome, western-themed place to take your kids to for a bite to eat. We would like to stress that we are in complete agreement with St. Petersburg Democratic Mayor Ken Welch who said, I want to emphasize that there is no need for hate in St. Petersburg. St. Pete is also home to a large gay community. As opposed to the thousands of examples of obvious pandering, a pride crosswalk actually makes sense in St. Petersburg's gay district, as it does in Toronto's gay community situated in the area of Carlton and Church Streets, where I lived for four years. But the issue we have is that police plan to charge the perpetrators with a felony count of criminal mischief. Is this really a felony? Is this a hate crime? We contacted St. Petersburg to find out if we could interview the crosswalk to find out how it felt but didn't hear back. No one should be in favor of vandalism. The issue is always about how we mete out punishment fairly. You can legally burn an American flag. That's protected by the First Amendment. But they'll hunt you down and make you a felon if you put skid marks on a rainbow crosswalk. Historical statues can be toppled and priceless paintings can be defaced. Thousands can march supporting terrorists without repercussion. But don't do donuts on a pride crosswalk. Is it any wonder why there is so much growing anger in the general public? Without the bedrock of fairness, we will never find compromise. 
let us leave you with this positive note. It's time you Americans took a page out of one of Canada's pride innovations. Here, we have a city worker from the intensely boring capital city of Fredericton, New Brunswick, painting a pride sidewalk with what looks like no paint on the roller. Actually, it's a special paint formula that puts down all colors all at once. Take that, vandals. This is Appalling News, and that's the way it is. <laughs>